The first thing I want to do is have you pull up two charts, chart one and chart two. Chart one is the actual musical chord chart for this tune, a typical bossa nova tune that you may encounter. You might even identify the progression. But we're going to have to go through this because there are a lot of different chords, but we'll lump them into three different categories so it won't be so difficult to manage. If you look at the chart, you will see that there are two sections, section A and section B. The form of this tune will be A-A-B-A. The first and second innings reflect the A-A concept, and the B would be what we'd consider the bridge. Okay, now let's go through this, and you'll see I have measure numbers written underneath each measure. Now, if you're confused in the first section why it says one and then nine, that means that that first measure would function as measure nine when you have repeated back. I'd like to go through the progression one time with the track playing and just call out the chords. Now, this would probably be the first step for you to get absolutely confident of what the changes are. Remember, you need to be able to anticipate the changes. So let's just do this. We're going to start right on the top. That's an F major 7 right there. Notice how it's for two measures and then a G7. G minor 7, G flat 7, flat 5, F major 7. Then you have the stab of the F sharp 7, flat 5. Then you repeat back, measure 9, here's measure 10. Measure 11. Here the quality change to minor right there. Comes down chromatically, back to the home base chord. Second ending, now we're in the bridge, section B. Comes up a half step, measure 18. There's the B7. F sharp minor seven. Now you're at measure 23, it's a D7. Measure 25 is G minor 7. E flat 7. Now the turnaround. A minor 7. D7 altered. I'll explain that in a few minutes. G minor 7. C7 altered. Now we're back to section A. That's the F major 7. That's your home base chord. Comes up to the G7. G minor 7, G flat 7, flat 5, F major 7, and then your stab. And then the DC means da capo. You go back to the head, you start all over again. So the entire form, as I said earlier, is A, A, B, A. And then you just repeat that form for solos. And then when you come back to the melody, you'll play the A, A, B, A. Okay, so there are a lot of chords in this, and you might even recognize this as a tune you've heard before. It's a typical progression. And the reason I chose this is that it encompasses a lot of harmonic moves. Some are common and some are not so common, but there are patterns in this. Now, the beauty of this is this tune encompasses all three basic chord families. The major seven, the dominant seven, and we don't have to say the word dominant, so we'll just say the seven, and the minor seven. And you also have an altered seven chord. You heard me reference that on that turnaround back there in measure 30 and measure 32. Okay, now let's look at chart two. This particular lesson is theory heavy. So we have to talk about the big picture, knowing what scale you're in or scales when each chord is prevailing. So any time in this song that the F major seven is the prevailing chord, you would have two possible scales. Now, the scales are also there for you, not just for your soloing, but for your chord comping to help you understand what your possible extensions would be. Now, you might say, wait a minute, I thought this was entitled Guide Tone Navigation. Indeed, it is. We're going to be staying down on the guide tones, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But ultimately, we're laying the foundation for you to be able to comp and extend the chords in a number of different ways. All right, so let's look at the chart, chart number two, and you will see that it's color-coded. It says chord scale relationships, and the red numbers are the chord tones. So the way I've categorized this is if you look over on the left, it says major seven in red. Then if you look at the scale to the right of that, it says Ionian, and then the next one says Lydian. So you, anytime you have a major seven chord, you have two possible scales that could be used. Then if you look at the numbers, you will see that the major seven chord is cons consists of the one, the three, the five, and the seven. That's pretty easy to remember. It's tertiary, which means it's built in thirds. It's every other note. Those would be the strong tones, and if you played a one, a three, a five, and a seven, you would have a major seven chord. 
So the variables, meaning the notes that are not present in the prevailing chord, would be the two, the four, and the six. Now look at the bottom of the page and you'll see enharmonics. This simply means different ways of numbering or spelling a note in a scale. One and eight are the same thing because eight is the octave of one. Sharp one is the same as a flat two, same as a flat nine. So I don't need to read all of these off, you can. But the important thing is to remember that two equals nine, four equals 11, and six equals 13. Those are those big extensions that we'll be getting into down the road. But if you look at these two scales, the Ionian and the Lydian, you'll see that the only variance is that the Lydian has a sharp four instead of a natural four. Okay, so just look this over and get a handle on knowing what scale you're in with any chord that is existing at the current time when you're playing this tune. But if we go back to this concept of each scale, each chord having its own possible scale, if you look at measures three and four, you have a G7 chord. Let's look at our chart. A dominant seventh chord, and you see I have dominant, D-O-M, the abbreviation in parentheses, that's because we don't have to say it. So a seven chord is built using a one, three, five, flat seven. How does it differ from that major seven? Well, the major seven has a natural seventh. It doesn't have a flatted seventh. So the two possible scales would be mixolydian or lydian flat seven. Another name for lydian flat seven would be lydian dominant. And you can see how there is a relationship between Ionian and Mixolydian. The only thing that changes is the seventh gets flatted. There is a relationship between Lydian and Lydian flat seven. The seventh gets flatted. So this isn't as complex as it looks if you just look at what stays the same and you look at what changes. Not that much changes. All right, let's look at a minor seven chord. That is the other chord that we encounter in this tune. A minor seven chord per the red numbers, would be one, flat three, five, flat seven. So in a way, it's like taking a dominant seventh chord and flatting the third. Hence, the scales would have to have those four components, and you can see that the variables change. Either you have a natural two in the Dorian and Aeolian or a flat two in Phrygian. Likewise, you all have, you have a four in all three scales, and then for the sixth, you have a flatted sixth in the Aeolian and the Phrygian. Now, this is just an overview. We will dig in heavily on this when we get into extensions and we get into soloing over this. Then we have, in the second half here, we have, for a seven flat five chord, four possible scales. And you can see that this is where our enharmonics come into play, because when I have to num number the scale, sometimes I have to put a sharp four instead of a flat five to account for that number. And anyway, the most important thing here is that the scale we're gonna use, for the most part, on the seven flat five chord is a Lydian flat seven. So if you look at that, it's pretty straightforward. You can see that you already used it up there as a possible scale for a dominant seventh chord. Now, the reason you could do that was it has both the five and the sharp four, or the flat five. Think of it that way. All right, so that's a quick overview. So let's go back and just look at our chart. I'd like for you to go through on your own and perhaps check mark every major seven chord in this progression. And then just Know where they are. Kind of have an idea when you look at the chart where they are. Then when you play the track and you're listening to it, make sure that you're calling out the chords and your ear starts getting accustomed to hearing when it goes to the major seven. A major seven chord is pretty. Then go through and check all the dominant seventh chords. That's just the straight seven. No alterations. Then check all the minor sevens. Then check all the seven flat fives. So you can see that we're really dealing with four chords in this song. Major sevenths, minor sevenths, seventh chords, and seven flat fives. The important thing is that you understand how the song is composed and that you just have these little snapshots of harmony. Because if you don't know that, you're going to fall apart. Okay? Now, in our next lesson, we're going to be talking about guide tone root structures. Before I go there, make sure that you have the numbers memorized for the chord qualities. For your major seven, it's one, three, five, seven. For the seventh chord, it's one, three, five, flat seven. And for the minor seven, it's one, flat three, five, flat seven. It's very important you know that before you go to the next lesson.